Hey guys, we have got some cool stuff today. A bore brush, the B23 from Zenith, that, man, it needs some uses. It's not splaying out very much yet, but that's okay. It's young, that's to be expected for some bore brushes. So we're not worried, but it just means we need to put some uses on it. But uh, as we get cooler, we start to see the Tatara is the maker. This is the Nadachi handle. It's bigger than the Masamune handle, but everything else in this configuration is Masamune. The base plate and the top cap. We'll talk more about that later. And what's cool is that is a the mildest configuration that Tatara offers. And so one of my favorite things to do is put a mild blade, I'm sorry, a mild razor and accompany it with a really sharp blade. Feather works out to be, to my skin, a nice, sharp, sharp blade. And it, the combination of a, a mild razor, sharp blade, just, just wonderful for me. Smooth shave, but close shave as well. High degree of comfort usually. So that's why it's a winning combination. The soap, and this is the coolest, one of my favorite scents out there, Barrister and Man Hallows. And this is special to me because this is the Hallows that were, was released right when I was uh, kind of coming into my uh, uh, Barrister and Man days and, and the premium soaps and things like that. This I I saw I saw this one be re, be released. I picked up this used tub later. Uh, at the time, I didn't know that I would love it so much. I didn't know my tastes, and so I acquired this later. It has been used. Um, by somebody else. The scent, though, is so good. I will have the scent notes in the body of the description if that's important to you. Kind of dark, like vetiver, sandalwood, things like that. Oh, man. Maybe almost a... Oh, so good. This is the perfect time of year for it. I'm, I'm not usually for seasonal scents, but, but yeah, certain ones do make me feel like I'm enjoying and cherishing certain parts of the year. And so, yeah, sometimes I do whip out something seasonal. You can see this hasn't been used very much because it's even got a, a width of air, a gap around the soap, a tiny one, one millimeter, maybe two, because it just uh, has shrunk a little bit over time. And so we're going to load uh, with that in mind. The uh, I think this is the 2018 Hallows. The 2019 Hallows was the white tub, I think, with the, the black kind of simplistic icon looking skull. I went ahead and grabbed that as well, but it's going to take me forever just to get through this one. Ah, um, oh, man, that's so good. So good. I need to use it more. I really do. All right. Uh, I've shown you everything. I do have my 3D printed bowl. On hand as well post shave I've got a couple different options and I'm gonna evaluate at the end of the shave if I've still got kind of a cloud of the hallows around me enjoying that I may just skip the post shave altogether this soap is the glissant base they are releasing a hallows version this year I've heard that is the soft hearts base and it was an evaluative version of uh, from Barrister and Mann when they were developing the Excelsior base. And they sent it out as a possibility and people loved it. But they ended up going with something different. But then they decided, let's release this. I guess I think it's the Soft Hearts series or I don't know if it's just the base or if it's called something special. They decided to go ahead and release some scents in that base because it was so well received. It's a little softer soap, and and so I haven't been gravitated, uh, haven't gravitated toward it because I have such a big collection of Barrister Man anyway. Someday I will pick up a Soft Hearts just for grins, but since I have this Glissant and then the I believe the Hallows from last year was Glissant too, I, I don't really feel the need to pick up the Hallows in it. Um, because I do love the Glisson base quite a bit. So let us start by putting the razor in. And the, some details here. We can talk about the razor. I bought online a, uh, a used 
Tara Razor, and I learned something very important. When it arrived, I discovered that the this little rim here is actually kind of fragile. Somebody who owned that other handle, it was the Masamune handle, so it had these dots kind of all up and down it. It's smaller, narrower, shorter, all that stuff. And apparently somebody had dropped the handle and it dented this little rim. And they have put their tolerances so tight that that small dent prevented it from screwing all the way into and holding the razor properly. So I contacted the guy I bought it from. He was unaware because he likes the harsher, more aggressive. Here, while I'm talking to you, how about we do something like that? He likes the Nadachi, the more aggressive settings uh, and gaps. And so he never really tried it. He always tried it with this type of handle instead of the Masamune handle. And so he, it never came up. And I believe him. Sounds he, Because what he did was he said, hey, you... Uh, get on the horn with Tatara and order, you know, find out how much it costs. I'll pay you and I will replace that handle. So awesome, awesome community spirit we've got going here with this guy. And, and what I'm going to do is the Masamune handle that I have, I will either, um, that's slightly wounded, see if you put, if you want to use it with the Nadachi top cap, it works just fine because, and I'll show you why. Eh, show you why in just a minute. Um, the the threading here doesn't go down as far with the Masamune. You can even see where it gets flat uh, right there and the threading stops. And that's the whole issue. With the Nadachi top cap, the threading goes all it goes deeper toward where it's actually welded together. And and so then that small amount is not uh, noticed with the Nadachi top cap. And so I learned that this razor, if you drop it anywhere, it's probably going to hurt the floor more than it hurts the razor unless it lands on this little ring right here, in which case it could, it could, uh, that could be a problem. So that's in, that's interesting. Now I wanted to show you something else. I, uh, because this is the Masamune top cap, it does have that little shoulder. And so when I screwed in the Nadachi handle, I discovered that there was just a little bit of play right here. And probably because that shoulder coming down and the Nadachi handle isn't expecting that. And so I, what I did was I took two pieces of in, uh, index card, folded them over and put them in there. And that way that tightened everything up while I was traveling. I didn't want it to rattle around while I was traveling because that could increase wear, uh, that sort of thing. And so everything's locked down super tight because I have those index cards in it. And so all I have to do is undo that. And there we go, just a little folded up, tiny piece of index card. And, and I'll show you when I screw it in. Hear that? Just a little bit of play. Now, what I'm hoping is that when I put the blade in, that'll be thick enough to act kind of like the index cards and everything will lock down nicely. So let's try that. Uh, I hope that's what goes on. You see with the Tatara, what they did was they don't actually have anything in here to prevent the blade, uh, I'm sorry, to prevent the, uh, to, to align the base plate. In terms of moving up and down this way, can you see that tiny bit of movement up and down? What prevents, what locks that into place is this tiny little collar on the very top. When that goes inside, you can watch it disappear there. When it goes inside the base plate, it centers everything up. And that's a really nice way to do it. It's ingenious, however, we can now see the fault in that. Because since this goes up inside and there's a shoulder involved and all that, you do have kind of a weak point right here um, if you drop the handle uh, so here's what everything looks like this is kind of a normal top cap normal looking top cap with rails here for to align the blade and then a bolt and you can see the shoulder of the bolt here this is unthreaded from here all the way down to where it connects 
and you can all it's in a way it's cool because you can easily tell the difference between the Nadachi top cap and the Masamune top cap because the Masamune has the uh, unthreaded area right here. The Nadachi goes much farther, closer to the top cap. And then the base plate pretty much looks like the other one. This is going to be the most mild setup that they have. And this one says Masamune right there. I do also have the Masamune open comb. I'm looking forward to trying that at some point. But I, I figured I have tried the Nadachi setup. It, it didn't feel super aggressive to me. But it just felt a little tenuous. Like maybe the blade wasn't gripped as strong as a lot of the razors that I do really enjoy and so what i'm hoping is to get a nice good grip out of this razor and uh and then we'll evaluate whether i want to keep the tatara around in my in my den okay so with that explanation we will go ahead and load up the top cap with the blade so i have a just to be clear the masamune head and that includes both the masamune closed comb base plate and top cap. So all what you see here is Masamune, which is the milder configuration. And because I'm waiting on that Tatara uh, order to come in, they're in Portugal, I don't yet have the Masamune handle. And so I'm hoping, yeah, that's locked down nicely. So I'm happy with that. Take a look at the exposure. Yeah, okay, that looks a little bit less, a little bit less exposed. But the gap is actually quite, uh, I mean, it looks like a, quite a good bit of gap right there. But as we need to know, the gap is not the only measurement going on here. How far the safety bar here sticks out this way. Um, whether it goes, you know, uh, whether it's pointed down, the angle, the, the bow of the top cap, how far it sticks out that way. And so those will affect the exposure of the blade. And so the gap is just one part of knowing about the aggression of a razor. So I'm glad to see that locks down nicely. Okay, it's a hefty razor, and they did that intentionally with the Nodachi handle that gave it more weight. All right. Uh, some of this is also to give my brush a chance to get softer because this is the one that has a ton of backbone. All right. I think we are good to go. And let's, uh, yeah, we're good to, I'm going to get my face wet and then we'll load up the soap. Okay. So I just pulled this out of the water and I've shaken a little bit of the water out. Let's Kind of complete the task there and then let's load up uh, let's do 40 seconds just in case since it's been a while probably doesn't need it but i just kind of feel like airing on the side of overload so that's 10 seconds at 20. Thirty and forty. There we go. I remember back in the early days how I was so new that I only knew about Amazon wet shaving gear. I poured over those comment sections as I selected soaps to get. I was entranced by some of the descriptions and thought Taylor of Old Bond Street was awesome. It's not. And then every once in a while I'd, have, I'd hear mention of some other soaps and other websites and things like that. And eventually I learned about uh, the other types of things that are out there for us. But Barrister and Man was also on Amazon at the time, and so I placed a couple orders. 
Um, and at the time it was viewed as a luxury soap for sure because it was more expensive than things like Perrazzo and all that. So Fairster and Man definitely has some early memory occurrences in my shaving journey. teaspoon here I was asked a question on Reddit today They said, I was telling them because they're experiencing some irritation or itchiness or something like that as a result of their soap. And I said, well, you know what? It could be that you need to add more water because I definitely have had that experience when I did not have my soap, a lather, as hydrated as it should have been. And so I, I, I wrote up an answer and to help him out and. And let's do a little video answer here as well, because I think it's relevant. And, and many of these things I have said at different points in many of my videos. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to them in person a little bit later. Um, I mean, as they occur when at the relevant point. Like right now, one of the things I said, look at the appearance of the soap. Is it all jaggedy? Does it look like a, a moonscape? Does it have sharp ridges and things like that? Well, you need to keep adding water. Now, of course, at the end of all of my suggestions, I was basically telling him that uh, from my perspective, this is how you can look for the proper amount of water. But in the end, it's up to you to choose where you like your hydration level to be. Maybe you like a drier lather and that's okay. But I do, I did recommend to him that he tries out adding more water. I believe underhydrated lathers is a, uh, a, a pretty widespread issue. I think a lot of guys would be pleasantly surprised if they were to get their lathers a little bit more wet. I also, also told him that if he picked up his lather and it balanced on his brush real easy, then without dripping off, without slowly moving, if it looked like maybe soft serve ice cream, and like so many of those lathers on shave of the day photos, then it was probably underhydrated. However, if he held up his brush and it was dripping off, dripping down the handle of his brush, sometimes that's a very good sign. I told him that, oh, it's too late to show you now, and I've definitely mentioned this in some of my videos. As you can see, the lather is on the side of the wall there of the bowl, but it is not forming a shelf. When it's drier, it, it forms a shelf, and your splay of your brush kind of goes underneath of that shelf. But then as you keep adding water and kind of pushing earlier, a few minutes, a minute ago, you saw me pushing down the lather from the walls. And then as it gains more hydration, it stops sticking to the walls and it stays down there at the bottom. So if it's, if it's falling down from the walls, then that's a good sign that you're starting to get close in terms of hydration. In terms, and of course, all this hydration advice is pointing you to the way I like it. But I'm also trying to give you landmarks and milestones to, to be able to be, have it be predictable for the way you, you, know, you guys like it too. 
And then I also told about some of the things that you regular viewers know that I do. See, if I push all my lather to a wad at the very bottom, and then I kind of scoop it up, and then I, you see there's a connector there. If I start to pull, what does it do? Look at that, that collapses fairly quickly on itself. Look at that peak, right? See, look, it's that, that thing it didn't support its own weight. It wouldn't let me turn it sideways, and it just fell right off. That's a good sign. This lather may actually be perfect right now. It might take a little bit more water, but I'm just gonna get a good consistent mix here before I think about adding more water. I also did, uh, told him about kind of the dollop drop, where you can pull up a lot on your brush, raise it up, and then wiggle. And then watch how it drops. Now look at that. See, that fell, and parts of it were falling in different ways and in a very uh, fluid kind of way, instead of just one dollop coming down from the brush. And then when that dollop hits, does it change shape? Does it maintain an onion-like appearance? You know, those are some things to look for as you gauge the elasticity and hydration level of your lather. Like I'll try to scoop up some, get it right there, and then pull it up, make a wall like that, and see what happens to the wall. collapsing in on itself. There was a thick section over here that caused it to kind of have a little bit more stability. But as you can see, it is moving down. This is a stiffer brush, and so I'm not going to take the lather further uh, because I want to see if maybe the, uh, if, if I can keep the lather, uh, to keep the brush comfy. Just make sure I get a good mix here consistent keep those wet spots away you want to uh, filter I'm sorry you want to make sure to distribute those wet spots all around the lather so everything's just a consistent feel you see that and then look at the texture in the bowl we don't have those craters and ridges and uh, stalag mites and we have this solid, almost featureless blob on my, on my brush. And it is kind of slowly moving down the handle. So those are some things to look for. I did mention that it can vary per soap. Not only did I say it could vary per user, as in his preference could be for a drier lather. That's okay, whatever makes him happy, right? but it could vary per soap. There are definitely some soaps that love water. You can hit them with as much as you want. You'll get, it'll stay creamy and really well hydrated at the same time. There's also a whole family of soaps out there that break down when you take them this wet. Barrister Man is a good quality soap, one of my favorites, and it holds together really nicely with this much water. It stays creamy, uh, but there are a whole bunch of others that don't. And I just, when I have one of those where I like the scent, I just have to run it a little drier than usual. All right, well, this looks terrific. So hopefully I will point him to this video. And that will give him a, some visual, visual accompaniment to the answer to that question. Oh, the water is cold. The seasons have really turned today. The tap water is a little chilly. And there we go. Uh, wet my face again. I'll start working. This lather in. So this is a young boar, less than 20 uses, and so it doesn't have a whole lot of split tips, and it's not splaying quite as much. It may take 20 or 30 uses before it changes. But one thing about Zenith, my other two Zeniths broke in much quicker. So it's interesting about that, but one thing about Zenith is even right now with the backbone being so strong, the tips are still quite comfortable. And I, I, I may not choose this brush when I have a, an aggressive razor that's maybe a little uncertain. That might lead me with maybe a little uh, razor burn. But this is a mild 
razor, reportedly, and so I thought it was a good time to put another use on this brush. This lather actually probably perfect. It's feeling really good. Ah, now, oh, you know what I should have mentioned? If you've got lather flying off, it probably means you're very close to a good spot with it. Because that means it's well hydrated often. It means that well, another thing we're doing with the lather is giving it time on my face. Letting it bond with my skin so that it can protect me with its slickness. I don't do any kind of prep except for just a little bit of splashing some water, you know, on my face to soften the whiskers. So my first pass often is the face cleaning pass. Yeah, this is a well hydrated lather. See, that's how awesome Bear Stern Man is. That it's this hydrated, but it looked so it looked so good and well shapen. Is that even a word? This is a really ergonomic handle. I've been enjoying it. Got a little soap on it, so I wash that off. All right, let's see how this Tataro at the mildest setting, how that works out. The feather blade has been used a few times. Many people would have thrown it away by now, but I've got one, a feather, but that's going like 60 uses or something like that. So this is not a big deal. This looks like it'll be the ninth shave. All right. Masamune, let's see what you have. Oh, that's mild. But it feels effective, though. Yeah, that's a much nicer feel. Of course, the feather could be playing a part as well. You're going to get a different face feel, you know, with each blade. I'm hearing a little bit of audio, so we do have some blade vibration, you know, going on in there. But I do like this shave a lot more than the Nodachi, at least in terms of my first impressions. What a great slick soap, man. Well, you know, I can't keep every razor that I try. I find a good deal, I consider it kind of a rental payment, and then I can cut you off and sell it for what I buy it for. And so that lets me try it out, show it to you guys. And if it happens to bring me something new to my, my whole shaving journey, then maybe it can stay in the den. So we'll just see what happens with this guy. Very comfortable first pass, about 24 hours worth of growth, and so that's fairly normal. All right, let's load the brush with another batch of lather. And since this guy doesn't have a lot of splay, I'm pressing him into the lather to push lather inside the, the bristles. And that way you don't have, it's not gonna to be totally empty when I do this. And we don't have to do a whole lot of scrubbing on this second pass, we've done it all the first so mainly just kind of lay down a nice layer it doesn't have to be thick at all if it's a good soap it could almost be invisible almost be so light that it's invisible and it can still provide very good protection and slickness for you All right, let's see what it does cross grain now. For me, uh, this movement here is cross grain because the hair right here goes from top to bottom. Shaving angle for me uh, in terms of this razor has been pretty natural. It's not an odd duck that's Requires relearning, at least for me. Yeah, 
it does have a little bit of blade feel. I was kind of not expecting that. And so there are definitely smoother razors out there. All right, very nice, comfortable. And I am glad that I did the 40 second load because I don't know that I would have the nice bit of margin that I have left over with this. Uh, this is probably enough to take care of my face now for the third pass. If I would have stopped at the usual 30 seconds, then I probably wouldn't have had this nice bit of kind of margin lather. Oh, the scent. Let's just take a second to enjoy it. Uh, woody, kind of resinous. Like something, something like oud or Oh man, that's so good. Maybe a little smoky. Very nice. I don't do against the grain. It I could do it on my cheeks if I wanted, probably. But my neck, it just really gives me nicks and problems, razor burn, things like that. So I just skip it. I get a nice close shave otherwise. And I'm gonna reverse. My hair grain goes this way in this tricky spot right here next to my Adam's apple. And second pass and first pass, I was doing this. I'm gonna reverse it. And this usually gets me a nice close shave in that area and this is comf this is nice this is above average in comfort that's really good sometimes I do that exact same stroke and I'll end up picking up a few hairs in a in a in a, almost a tuggy kind of way as as the razor moves out of a cross grain area and into one that's almost against the grain but worked well with this setup so that speaks highly for it all right, I'm going to do more of a full rinse now. Take a look at the closeness, see what we want to do from here. Well, really happy with the closeness of that shave. Uh, almost baby butt smooth, and all I did was cross grain here. I didn't go against the grain on my cheek area. And down here, I don't see any length on any tips. And that is a superior result for me. Looks like four teaspoons of water is what I did. And this lather, pretty much perfect. It might be a little on the wet end of, of perfect. but And this brush, because it's so stiff, did not accentuate it in its best light because of that, because of its stiffness. If I would have had a soft badger brush, then this would have been more luxurious feeling. But it's very slick. And... I'm going to put my brush down there. Let's just kind of feel the lather a little bit here. Yeah, that's that's pretty. Contact slickness is what I call the uh, the way this slick how does the slickness feel when you rub your fingers together and you and you touch and this is a very well hydrated lather. And it's a very light kind of very light oily kind of soapy slickness my razor was gliding very easily that is a good trait that you want to look for when you do this and pull your hands apart you want to see a little bit of droop there and sometimes when there's more mass to the lather you'll get more droop but if it just stays straight out then you might need to add more that may be something that tells you to add more water to your lather next time but I don't really have a big sample size because I used up a lot of this particular batch, but just it's nice and luxurious, feels terrific. Uh, 
I do believe that in terms of the contact slickness, the Excelsior probably has this base beat, but you might not be able to tell as much on your face with the razor because it just moves so easily and with lots of, of glide. And see this just, it took tons of water and it hasn't broken down. The slickness is there. A, another way to evaluate slickness is I'll wipe my thumb across my fingertips and then I'll come back. And if the slickness doesn't change very much at all, I like that. There are some soaps where you wipe your uh, thumb across and it's almost like it takes all of the slickness with it and it pushes it away like a bulldozer. And then on your way back, you have a whole different feel, almost not like dry fingers, but, but it's just not nearly as slick. And, and that tells you something about the soap. All right, well, this was terrific. Unlike my other Zenith brushes, this one, very slow to break in. We do see some outliers here, and so that gives us hope that more of this center mass uh, types of bristles will migrate in that direction and when it when they do i think this will just be a wonderful instrument so looking forward to that it is still young so we need to have our expectations in the right place that's for sure all right well the feather and the masamune setup Great combination. The first pass maybe had a little bit more blade feel than I might like. The Timeless 68 solid bar and scallop bar probably. The uh, Fatipes, probably razors that uh, are definitely razors that give me a much smoother feel with similar results, similar closeness. And so I might prefer those a little bit more. Uh, I'll definitely put a few more blades through this setup. But I do think that this, the Masamune here is a, uh, is the razor with the gap combination that's going to be the most friendly to me. The one I might gravitate toward if I had to pick from the Tatara lineup. And so uh, this configuration looks like the one that I will see in its best light, try a few different blades on it. Um, don't know that I'll keep it yet based on this impression. I've just got so many others that are smoother. This one is nice. And I'd be happy if this is the only razor I had uh, because of some disaster or whatever, I wouldn't feel lacking. But it uh, it's just not, in comparison, there are just some others that uh, I do like a little better. The fit and finish, very, very, very nice. Happy with that, that's for sure. Oh, and I think I lost my train of thought earlier when I was talking about the handle and things. I have, so I have the Masamune handle that is a little bit bent right there. And if I find a person who is, is willing to maybe make an alteration of it, you could get a Dremel tool in there for just a second to trim it back a hair's width, and then it would work fine. Or, if it's a person who likes the Masamune handle, this is the Nadachi handle, as a reminder. The Masamune handle with the Nadachi top cap, then they're not going to notice anything. Don't need to make any alterations to it. And so then I would, if uh, I'll sell that, and then I can send it back. I can send that money to the guy who's replacing my Masamune handle. And, uh, and I think that's very fair. He certainly is being a stand-up guy, and I do appreciate that. And so I'm going to be fair back, uh, back to him. And so what I'm doing, taking everything apart, drying everything off. It's a stainless razor, so in a sense you don't have to, but I don't think I'll be using this same blade and razor combination tomorrow. I'm going to put everything on my uh, towel over here, little hand, hand towel washcloth thing. Well, I feel like trying the vanilla in the deep conditioning from Nivea got a good bit of vanilla in there and I've learned I'm kind of not all that keen on that Let's just see what happens I think that'd be a good I think hallows should be a pretty good match for something like this with the kind of spices and vanilla and things like that feels good I'm about to go to sleep anyway so 
I uh, can't smell it when I'm asleep, right? Just in case I don't like it. But I think it's in the same family. Uh, the Hallows wasn't really strong around me, and so I decided to go ahead and put on a scented product after the shave. And very close, as we talked about, but also really uh, irritation-free. I don't have any kind of tenderness. I didn't feel any stinging, and this is an alcohol splash. None of that. Close shave. It's almost like if the blade is hitting exactly where it's supposed to be hitting, where it's cutting the hairs really close but not irritating the skin, then this is what you get. You get a close shave and you get high comfort. Very nice. Very nice. And I don't even think I felt a sting at all. Sometimes I feel like a tiny little twinge for like one second and then it goes away when I think I've had a smooth shave, but not that at all. So really, really nice. Excellent. Really happy today. Oh, so good to use Hallows again. I, the Katara Masamune setup was, had a little bit more blade feel than I thought it would, but I think that's fine because if it's as smooth as I kind of like, I, I don't think that's as good for a lot of people's preferences. I think a lot of guys like to have a little bit of blade feel, a little bit of aggression, that sort of thing. And they're also the guys who have a thicker lather, the drier lather, I think they need a little bit more blade exposure to kind of cut through that lather. I think the safety bar kind of rides on top of that thick lather sometimes, and they need something a little bit more aggressive because their lathers have more density to them. It's just a guess of mine. All right. Well, I'm a happy, happy camper with today's shave, and uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys in some way. You take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Good night.